Hey guys, Kimsey here. Welcome back to Microsoft Flight Simulator. How are you enjoying your CRJs? I am enjoying it immensely, so much so that I have been streamlining a checklist of my own. Let me show you how that looks. Something like that. That streamlines the process so that it puts in the essential things and gets rid of the non-essential things, the flare. So we can go and start up faster, but still from a cold and dark situation. So we'll try and then sample that here. We'll see if that checklist works. It's a constant work in progress, but I'll share with you the details, the link to that one when I have it in a ready state. Okay. Anyway, without further ado, let's get started and test this out. EFB first and foremost, let's start that thing. We see the airsoft sign. I do like the details in this one. You see the battery is actually dropping. You see the Bluetooth having a delay, the Wi-Fi, and then getting the signal, all those details, very nice. So we go to the aircraft tab first, and then we make sure that we are in a cold and dark state. So that's the default state that I have. And then we'll uh, put the wheel chocks in place so that we can put on the GPU and then it will open all the doors so we can check outside yeah there it is beautiful good so now that's done we can go up here in the overhead panel and turn on the battery master we have ground power available so let's use that as well turn on the nav lights scan through flow like this and we have the hydraulics, the 3A one, this one. It's not visible from here, there. 3A to on, like so. And then we set the interior lights however we want it. So me personally, I like having those like yellow glows in each of the buttons. So I turn on the overhead lights and the other things as well. So in here, we have lights here too, which is the, what do you call it? Integral lights. You guys told me I think that's similar with the Airbus, right? So we set the iris to nav for both. And that will start aligning as we can see in the PFD here. Now I do have my settings for <clears throat> a realistic align time. So that I think takes around 11 minutes more or less. So yeah, we have plenty of space, so we're trying to do things in parallel. Well, that's working. We're doing everything we can at the same time so that the timers are working uh, right next to each other, right? So anyway, so once that's done, we can go and call in the ground services. So let's tune into any ground frequency here. And let's go and call the... This is more for uh, role-playing. So even though we are trying to be as efficient as possible i didn't want to completely get rid of the role-playing stuff i do still want the animations in there so i want the the stuff here the catering truck the uh, the luggage to get loaded so i added that in the checklist so we have a mix of even though you <laughs> sometimes yes the trucks are clipping and bouncing all over the place it still adds to the experience that they're really flying an airliner but feel free to get rid of that if you are not a fan. Okay, up next we can go into the FMS. That's all good. Check the pause in it here and put in, we are currently in Chicago. So that should be where it should be. Next page, get the GPS one position. Copy that to the scratch pad and paste that here. That should be good on that side. And then we plug in the origin and the destination for this flight is Colorado Springs. Okay, cost right there, 789 nautical miles. Departure would be from 04 left. Execute that, go back to the flight plan. Now we plug in. Now there are easier ways of doing this. I think I've seen um, some people in YouTube uh, sharing how to import stuff from SimBrief directly. I do like this experience though, punching in each of the waypoints. I think it's a good practice. So I have SimBrief here on my other screen and I'm just punching in the route one by one. Pekwe, Pippin, uh, Rotten, Gold, uh, all that stuff. 
So I, I like punching it in, especially if you're in VATSIM or other online networks, because it gives you um, a visual and oral uh, uh, recognition of which waypoints are flying, so that when you are given like uh, a direct to um, instruction, it rings a bell like direct rotten. So you oh I punched that in a while ago. So it kind of rings a bell and it's not like completely alien to you. And you will be more professional when you respond because you will recognize it. At least that's my personal preference. So I like punching things in. Uh, plus I like the sounds of the the stuff, the, the buttons as you click them through. So let's put in ILS35 right here. Uh, transition will be Drake and we'll be joining the Aussie for arrival with the gold transition. Execute. That's perfect. Let's double check the legs here. Looking good there. We do have a discontinuity in double Golf Lima Delta in there though. I wonder which VOR that is. Gold VOR. Okay. So that from there, that should look good already. And if you want to double check your route, you should be able to... Uh, if you go to... <coughs> this outer circle right here that will make the MFD into a plan mode and then we can go to MFD advanced so this is very similar to the CJ4 where we can say okay we're coming from runway 04 left and then we just walk through the different waypoints one by one you can zoom in and out depending for more or less visibility and then you see the constraints as well with the arrival in there and that's the approach so it kind of melts very well there's even an option so if you go to MFD menu you can turn on the mist approach so you can actually see the mist approach procedure because I, it was nice to see that yes it actually supports that as well at least from a an FMS point of view I haven't been able to check if the autopilot follows that but at least it's here right anyway so that's good so that looks good there let me go back to my checklist Hope you guys are not timing me <laughs> but i think it should take around 15 minutes more or less including the irs alignment you can make that faster if you're going to skip the stuff and just really streamline it but it won't be as much it won't be as fun i think in my opinion right perf in it are we on that side already yes perf in it so we'll be cruising at flight level 380 today Oh, and that's something that's different. The CJ4 by working title accepts this. This one, this CRJ by Aerosoft, you need to enter either F or FL380 so it recognizes that. I'm assuming if you enter 38,000, that works too. So uh, depending on how you like it. Right, execute. And for the weights here, I'd like to go back to the EFB, go to the performance, and we'll sync it from here. So first things first, I want to init fuel from aircraft just to sync what is the current weight and fuel from the aircraft and synchronize it with what we're seeing here just to be on the safe side. And then I'd uh, be getting the zero fuel weight from SimBrief because right now what I have in SimBrief is not one is the one with the the aircraft information here like passengers here up to 70 but the one in simbri for some reason is up to 78 so it's easier to just match the zero fuel weight so what i do is in simbri if i look at the zero fuel weight right there 59,100. <clears throat> so click that remove it 59,100. And then the block fuel would be 11,700. Let's round it up to 12,000. So I'm not focusing so much on the sim brief aspects here because you might be having a different workflow, but the startup should remain the same. So the checklist should be more or less universal. So that looks good there. We've entered everything. Now what we need to do is we need to... So this is the plan. But now we want to make it happen for the actual weights inside the sim. So we want to reflect that in the plane. So when we set payload, you see the uh, the plane change in its weight. And for some reason, if I press it one more time, that changes again. I'm not sure why that is. And you, if you press it multiple times, it doesn't change anymore. 
but looks like the center of gravity changed so it looks like it tweaked that so in my checklist i said the set payload and simulator two times just press it twice right and then we copy that to fms so whatever numbers we have here we copy that using this button so when we look here those are now filled out magically nice and then since we're here already let's also set those v speeds that's the one there normally you set them up manually but you can just set all and those are all set including the selected the speed bug very handy okay looks good all right so now we go back to the fms go to vnav setup and here mainly would want to check the transition altitude if you're flying in the us then you don't need to change anything because it's defaulted to 18,000 in flight level 180 but if you're flying in Europe, in Asia, that will be different. So you'll have to set that manually. So just a heads up. Right? Next up is the perf in here. So here we have an opportunity for a flex temp so that our engine won't struggle so much uh, when taking off. So you're kind of lessening the power that the uh, engines are giving out. 46 i think is what the dude recommended the dude is the guy who made all those tutorial videos before the crj even released and uh, he recommended that as like a good rule of thumb not scientific in any way but i guess that's more based on his real real experience that it's ballpark should be good enough let's get the legs page in here for the co-pilot and then let's go up here set the hydraulics all the other stuff so remember we set the second one to on these guys we set to auto and then let's get back on this screen you'll notice i have different camera views as well i set them up control alt number to save and then alt number to load it's very useful so next up we have cabin pressure uh, we need to change the page though one second so we need to change the page to ECS there you go so that we can compare the cabin altitude that's the airport elevation uh, we set this airport elevation for the elevation right here for now we'll change that later when we're about to land but for now that's 680 here in uh, Chicago okay looking good so that's done What's next? We set the windshield heat to low. There you go. And we can turn on the snow smoking signs. And since we're done refueling, we'll set the seat belts to on and emergency lights to arm. Now let me also do one check here. Fuel should be 12,000 pounds and in here we have 12,000 pounds. Okay, so that's good. It's not actually part of my checklist but just to be sure okay next up we have the stab trim engaging those the corresponding warnings will disappear in the uh, cast in the center panel as you enable them the mac trim engage that as well now i have in my checklist the yaw damper you should engage them too but that actually wouldn't work until the oh that's perfect timing until the irs is aligned so until you see this view in your pfd the yaw damper even if you press them won't work so you'll still see the yaw damper warning in there but now that that's aligned so that is in the checklist as well check irs aligned and if it is then engage your damper one and two so now when we get back to the panel the yaw damper warning should not be in there anymore okay looking good there what's next now we can close the doors assuming that everyone has uh, come on board already assuming that all the cargo has been loaded all the food has been Captain, put in the cabin is secure all passengers are aboard looking Ladies good and gentlemen on behalf of the captain and crew now we can start our device. apu we hope you enjoy flying with us so we Before press this button off, like to, to open the flap and then we press this one to actually start the APU. You can see a start indication in there and you can see here that the APU door is open, RPM is rising, EGT is rising, you have all the other indications as well. 
And if we look outside, we should see that the flap at the back is open right there. Where my mouse is. I hope you saw that. And we can hear it definitely. Good. So that's working. Everything looks good so far. I love these little uh, tweaks, little uh, fiddling with the the panels and the buttons. This is exactly what I'm looking for in an airliner. All these bells and whistles. With GA, you just set up a few buttons. One, two, three. And you're off. Off to fly. Here, you're actually fiddling with the systems like half of the time. Alright. The APU is good. We have it there. You can double check upstairs here in the overhead panel. The avail. APU is available so we can start the air conditioning. Circ fan is on as well. And we can even double check if you like to really role play it. You can check that the elec AC electrical shows the APU gen and it shows that the flow is coming from the APU now. Right, so that should be more than enough to satisfy us that the APU is indeed available. With that, we can get rid of the GPU and we can also remove the wheel chocks. Good. Now watch as that GPU truck fumbles around <laughs> and rolls all over the place. <laughs> that guy is pretty hilarious, a clumsy trucker through and through. Okay. We are good there. What's up next? Next is checking the weather. Now, the weather checking, it's up to you. It's up to your workflow. I would normally use little nav map or you can also do it properly. Like check the ATIS here. Um, you can tune the ATIS and wait for it. Wait for the altimeter. So set that in. So for example, that I think is uh, 2987 here. And also here. And I think on the co pilot side as well, although I, personally I don't really care about this side. So whatever happens there, I have no uh, yeah, I have no investment in that. Good. What's next? Let me have a look before I set it. Okay, now we're getting our clearance. So if you're in VATSIM or if you are using pilot to ATC or even the default sim, then now's the time to get your clearance. Assuming that you got it, you should have received a couple of different information. Yeah. <clears throat> Read back correct. So assuming we did get that, now we can turn on the flight director. We should have been given a runway assignment. Expect runway 04 left, for example. So we should be able to set the runway heading there. If you have charts, then you'll know the runway heading for that particular runway. For us, it's 042 for 04 left. Right. And then we will also set the initial altitude that we've been given by ATC. For example, that would be 5,000. Yes. And uh, then we'll set the squawk code. So the squawk code here, let's say 5223. Set that in ATC1. Good. That should be okay. <clears throat> now that's done. We're ready to start the engine. So we can turn on the beacons. We can request for uh, pushback and engine start. I think in Europe that's uh, common, but in the US I think it's mostly pushback. Um, what's the term they have? But it's they basically it's there up to up to them, up to the pilots. Pilots discretion. There you go. That's the word I'm looking for. All right. So let's call this tug guy. Shift B gets that in quickly. Although for steering, we will still need the ATC window, so let's open that anyway. Tune into ground, uh, ground services, the pushback, that's the guy. And make sure you remove, release the parking brake before he gets there. Otherwise, he will just push you. You know what? Let me demonstrate. <laughs> this, is, <laughs> this guy is relentless. Okay, once he gets in position, he won't even wait for you. He'll just go. Here we go. Look at this. Uh, look at him struggle <laughs> because the parking brake is on so once you release the parking brake then the flow will be faster <laughs> but yeah that guy 
All right, steer to the right. Now, I am, I always get confused here, but I basically look here to the right of the plane or to the left of the plane is how I think about it. So steer to the right of the plane. There you go. And once uh, while that's happening, you can actually multitask as well. Go back to the main screen here and we can actually start the engine here. So let's go and turn on our fuel pumps. Start the right engine. You can hear the AC packs going off. Let's double check that we are in position. Go, in good. You can see that the N2 is rising. We're waiting for N2 of 20% before we introduce fuel. Okay, that looks good. Push back and stop. We can set the parking brake again. And N2 is already 20%, so we can hit this red unlock and then put that in the idle position for throttle 2. And you can hear the engine starting to spool up. Beautiful. I think there's even a, a view here. Let's go and find it. So if we go to showcase a fixed camera, there should be a couple of different ones here. So that one would be perfect for the APU. A wing view. Nice. That one's a bit crooked. Landing gear. That one probably would be the best for the APU, huh? Uh, sorry. Engine 2. Or that one, rather. It's gonna be perfect. Cool. If there is smoke in the cabin during the evacuation of the aircraft, the walkway emergency Engine one device can start. will display to the exits, which are located here and here. In case of an extreme emergency landing, you will be instructed to get into the brace position, which is executed by placing your head between your knees with your hands over your head. We will also rising. remind you that you should turn off all electronic devices. We thank you for paying attention during 20%. this brief presentation. Introduce fuel. Now, instead of going outside and looking, we can instead focus on the numbers here and monitor it like a real professional. <laughs> Maybe not. Maybe not me. Maybe you got the wrong guy. Okay. Well, pressure rising. That looks good. Should hear a warning when the engine is up and running fully there you go so now isn't that fulfilling actually getting rid of all those red and yellow warnings that is beautiful okay good now what did we miss what now so let's check the electricity first so we go to the elec the ac power and let's double check yeah generator one and two are good they're supplying power to the buses. You can see the green line there. The APU is still on, but it's not being used anymore. So that means we can actually turn it off now. Right? Looks good. All right. Now, anti-ice, depending on your situation, you might need to turn on cowl or wing anti-ice. There are some specific steps in the manual. But uh, here for now, we turn on the probes for sure. This one is the one I always forget, so I made sure to include that in the in the checklist right that's perfect good right so let's go ahead and uh, what's happening why does it seem like slow motion okay there we go <laughs> so Sorry, that was weird. Okay, so from here, there are di different steps, but for sure, we need to arm the nose wheel steering right here. And then we need to turn on the taxi lights. That signals that we are about to move. All right, let's release the parking brake. Get going. And then let's do stuff in parallel again while we're on the move. There we go. Okay. So what do we need to do? Let's consult the checklist. But now we don't need to rush because it's going to be a long taxi. So we can take our time now. 
So taxi lights are on, flap set that for takeoff. If we look at the performance tab here, it will be either a flaps 8 or a flaps 20 takeoff. And most of the time, it will be a flaps 8, I believe. So flaps 8 would be the two notches down for the flap. So that's one, two. And you can check that in here, getting enunciated. You can also check that outside. I might be taxing a bit too fast here, might be a bit too excited. That's fine. Right, so now that the flaps are set for takeoff, we can go and check the flight controls as well. Uh, I think it's this one. There you go. And we'll basically be checking this panel here. Now I can do like an alt, right alt, and then left click. So you can see that better, but basically you can check the flight controls this way. Left, right, push, pull, rudder as well, although if I move the rudder, it will move the nose wheel steering too. One thing I noticed, I'm not sure if that's a bug, maybe you guys can help me out. If I set the nose wheel steering to off, and if I move my rudder, it still moves. Not sure if that's with my controls. I would have thought that should have been disabled already. Anyway, just a minor thing. Good. Right. What else do we need? So we need to align the stab trim. Um, let me see. Let me go and see where the runway is first though. Runway is somewhere there. I think it's that one. I should have opened my Navigraph um, app here on the side so I know where we are. Okay, it's not too late. I can open it. Give me a few seconds, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, the captain has a fire, so we are now cleared for takeoff. That's very interesting. I wonder how they know. Maybe they check our location against the runway that we set so that when we're near that runway, that announcement plays automatically. I like that level of detail. Alright, so one thing we didn't do yet, which is in the checklist, we look at the takeoff trim, 6.9. And then, it's okay, this is the runway already. Uh, and then we set, we go to the stat page here. And then we make sure that our trims are correct. Let me open that window again for you guys. That one. So that the trims are all green here, aileron and rudder, that means they're centered. And the stab trim, stab trim we align with whatever was there, 6.9. So that's what we'll do. 6.9 right here. Like so. Perfect. And we are good to go. Okay. So that would be the end of my personal taxi uh, checklist. The startup we've done already a while ago. Okay, so now we start with the takeoff. Assuming that we've been given clearance, take off. Then we'll double check that the brake temperatures are okay. Yes, they're all green, all zero. We'll set the fuel flow to the cross flow to manual right there. And then we can then set the TCAS to on right here. From standby, put that to one. Good. Turn on the strobes as we're entering the runway, the active runway, and assuming that we've been given clearance, we can actually turn on the landing lights as well. There you go. So right now the checklist is still uh, in progress, a work in progress. I only have it until right after takeoff. So that's where we'll be ending the video as well. And I hope I remember all these things. Uh, it's still a bit foggy with this takeoff because so many things happen at the same time. And uh, I'm not quite sure yet what my ideal approach is, but we'll try it out. We'll try it out, okay? Okay. We press the toga switch. You can either press that through here, that run next to the throttle, that black button, or easier is just press the screw here. Not really a button, but easier to reach. That should enable the takeoff, takeoff uh, mode there, pitching up 10 degrees or more. Right, so with that, we are ready for takeoff. Hold the brakes, push the throttle. We see that the takeoff config is okay there, just to double check. So push the throttle to Oga, you'll see the indication there. Climb, 
Saratoga, release the brakes. Push forward on the yoke until around 80 knots. 80 knots check. Release the forward pressure bit by bit. Try and maintain center line. Look for the V speeds. There's V1. Rotate. Not too shabby. I'll take it. Good. Positive rate. Gear up. Nice. So here is where things get a bit blurry for me. So I go to speed mode and heading mode for me for now. Right. Let's turn on autopilot so I'm not so rushing so much. The speed we can also increase. Up and we have some fl flap schedule in there. It says there are one. So go to flaps one. And then increase the speed bug to 250 knots. Alright. So far so good. Oh beautiful. Okay. Let's set flaps up. So now flaps are fully retracted. And let's set the thrust, the throttle to climb. But we're actually reaching our altitude here that we selected initially. So we're actually pulling back on the throttle so that we don't overspeed beyond 250 knots below 10,000 feet. Yeah, but assuming that we've been given further clearance, then we can increase that. So yeah, so so much workload. And for one person doing all of this and then communicating with ATC, that's going to be a lot actually. It's going to be very interesting. So let's go to speed mode here. Put that to 250 knots. Go back to climb detent. There you go. And now we should be climbing again. And now we should actually start turning too. So heading bug. Soon we've been asked to turn left here. To intercept the course that we set. So we're actually moving away from our flight plan. Right, I'm going to go out in external view guys so that you can see it better just for the the views it's going to get loud okay there you go bit laggy maybe that's the FS 2020 bug that we still need to fix but my goodness I'm loving this so yeah look forward to more videos hopefully full flights eventually but I'm really enjoying flying this plane. More on-air stuff, definitely. Uh, we also have some checks here, like turning off the taxi lights uh, at 10,000 feet, turning off the landing lights. But let's go through that next time. For now, I wanted to focus on the cold and dark startup all the way until takeoff. So I think we're good for here now. All right. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed that. If it was not educational, then at the very least, I hope it was a little bit entertaining. <laughs> so as I said, I'll share the checklist with you guys as well. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day. And I'm looking forward to your comments, tips, and let's see how we fly this plane moving forward. Thanks. Clumsy flying. And bye-bye.